process and our work on after school children. We got 10 million for foundational learning from the Lego Foundation. And we also had 49 million for education um, GPE, Global Partnership for Education. This in its these funding is a, a testament to the way the international community see what we are doing in this regard. But let me say this, whilst I have mentioned all of these funding, it is not enough. We have quite a lot of work to, do, to, to, to get done. Most of these funding are linked fenced for a specific aspect of our work. And so we need monies from the consolidated fund to make sure that we can deliver effective, efficient um, education system. One that is transformed to meet the needs of the 21st century. Let me stop at this point. I want to thank you greatly for your patience and for the audience that you have accorded. Thank you. Yes, so this will give us the outline of our presentation. 
we are going to give you highlights and updates of the 2022 fiscal year uh, budget reports. We give the key deliverables and achievements within the year of 2022 and the challenges we encountered. The next will give you the updates of the fiscal year from January to June. You have the Honorable Minister making reference of some funds that we received in the last two months, which were apparently not captured in this project because this came after June, July. They were reporting up to June, of 2022. So then we have the key deliverables. We have updates on financials to review on the project execution and the amount and the sports contract date. Also, ongoing contracts and projects, the price as amounts and the like. The progress on policy commitments in the 2023 fiscal year budget speech and achievements to date. The next will be the budget presentation for fiscal year 2024, in which we will provide the key deliverables and also eyes on any revenue projects and presentations of the strategic plan, including the projects that are ongoing and activities and the costings. Highlights of our domestic capital projects and donor projects funding. And finally, we're interested in gender responses projecting which we would like to present to this August panel. So the MBSSC rests on four strategic pillars, one of which is the universal access, which mandates us to ensure that we open up and broaden up the course to ensure that everybody has access education. The next is comprehensive safety to ensure that the school environment is safe for all our children that are going to school and radical inclusion that give access to all kids that will get the school age to get access to school, leaving no child behind. And of course, quality teaching and learning which stems from the SDG 4 for which we are concerned to ensure that all kids have quality teaching aligned in school. And to achieve that, we have a vision and a mission. Thank you, back, please. And our vision and mission, go back, please. So, our vision is to ensure that all students, this vision is in concert with the Institute of Technical and Higher Education at some point. So, it tells us that all learners in Sierra will have equal opportunity to access quality basic technical, vocational, and higher education that enables them to participate in public life, contribute to the national and global economy, and fulfill their potential. So to achieve that vision, the vehicle the which we will use to achieve that, which is our mission, reveals that we need to facilitate and support the community, psychosocial, and physical development of all children, and to ensure safe learning environments that are inclusive and well resourced. So on this premise, we are here as the Minister of Basic and Senior Secondary Education and to present the budget for the fiscal year of 2024. Next. So this is a mandate and target to ensure that MBSC plan, foresee and implement educational policies and regulations in all educational institutions from very close to the all the statutory bodies, that is why TSC, Institute um, Education Offices, Education Development Partners, Projects, etc., etc. And our target is to ensure that ministry's performance undertaking is established from the targets and the rules of the medium term national development plan on the cost of 1.1, which deals with the human capital and sub cluster 1.1.1, a free basic senior secondary education and Sustainable Development Goals 4, which is also tied around with the manifesto of the government of the day. So this gives a schematic view of our general ground with the political leadership, the minister and two deputies that we currently have, the chief education officer and deputies, two deputies. And on the other side, we have the permanent secretary who was alongside on the same arm with the autonomous bodies of the Teaching Service Commission, 
uh, was served in an examination council, national archives, national library report, UNESCO commission, etc. And next on the ladder we have the directorates. We have six directorates, partnership and financing, educational services and programs, non adult education, school quality assurance, management and resources, director planning and policy, director curricular research, and the general admin and support. Beneath which we have the respective uh, operators, that is contract staff, education officers, partners, fellows, and we have the information communication technology unit and education management information systems and the innovation units, the delivery team, and the life course within. Next. So this gives um, the financial and budget report for our following performance in 2022 with general admin. Overall, uh, approved budget was 31.3 uh, and we ended up using 26 mil with a variance of five. We actually collected 2% of proposed budget for 2022. And yes, so as listed, we have the various divisions and the approved budget and budget utilization. Next. So the financial and budget report on our PIBs as revealed, we had 369.8 in 2022, and our actual between December, January to December was 361, with a variance of nine. We actually consumed 97% of that, with the following descriptions, like teaching and learning materials, school resources, feeding program, rehabilitation of school, establishing laboratories and schools, resources, equity, and free project, by government body on schools, library services, own economics, and the rest as indicated. Next. So we have key deliverables for the year of 2022. One, to ensure that we develop and approve the new education act. That has been enacted and it's in law as of May 2023. And also to operationalize the school fees utilization and school approval policy. That has been achieved and also rolled out. We had a deliverable to develop a new certificate examination council act at about 2002 that was drafted and it was in the final stage for completion then in 2002. We had the mandate to do three hostels for girls in three districts. That set up in 2002 and it was in progress. And further to establish additional learning centers for literacy program, which unfortunately we were able to achieve. And also we have to develop and roll out a senior secondary education curriculum and syllabuses, for which the curriculum and syllabuses have been developed, but we now rolled out in about 2002. And we also need to equip additional schools with science laboratories. This commenced in 2002. <coughs> it's currently in progress. There is evidence of us distributing these materials to schools. And further we have video like this. Further, we have to strengthen additional studies in order to start capacity building additional recruitment, what has been done through the Digital Service Commission. That's been achieved and it's still ongoing. Next. So, nonetheless, on our achievements and progress to the milestones, we are constrained along the way with a couple of bottlenecks for which some of these revealed. One of which is the access to funds from the Ministry of Finance, from the government, from donor partners, and the like. In most cases, we realize a couple of bureaucracies to access this funds and show them because of their programs and activities, and these are time bound. And of course, we have the constraints of mobility. As staff to move from one area to the other, we need bikes, we have uh, people that have uh, constraints, fear, and other things to ensure that our staff move respective jobs. Next. So we have key deliverables for 2023. One which is to review and update um, the Education Act of 2024. That has been done. We realize the Education Act that we had is obsolete since 2004. So the need was urgent for us to review that and that was done and it's completed. And also to construct three posters. We have this in 2022 that was not completed. 
So we now have in twenty twenty three and we have two of these sites being completed and work is in progress in an advanced stage. We also get you pictorial evidence to depict that. And we need to also develop and rule out the serious primary education curriculum and syllabuses. This has already been achieved, it's been done, it's been ruled out, and we have 78 syllabi being ruled out across the districts. To equip additional schools with science laboratories. So we've got science equipment distributed to schools, that is ongoing, and we still have more schools to issue out these uh, equipment. We have a plan to phase out double sheet system in school, for which this is already ongoing, especially being completed, and some schools are gradually moving into the one chip system. And we are also supporting these schools to move into the one chip system by ensuring that we provide uh, additional classroom facilities to cater for uh, the extra children in school. So we have the construction and rehabilitation of non-formal education online center. This was in 2002, it's not been achieved, and we have this now strongly on board to ensure that we make provision for non-formal learning centers. Because quite recently we've got over 2,000 plus kids that have been reintegrated from the non-formal school system into the formal education system. So the need is urgent for us to provide additional learning centers to make provisions for this people. Next. So now we have more updates on financials um, for the 2023 with our PIPs, is that it? Okay, so now we have the recurrent for 2023, for which um, the proof budget was 34.9, and we actually utilized 7.3 with an outstanding of 27.6. Our consumption rate was 21%. So at least here, these we have respected the lesions, I mean general services, director of value and policy, and the associated cost and utilization as listed. We also have the updates on the financials, uh, the budget execution for 2023 on our PIP. So on our PIPs, we have a domestic PIP with an approved budget of 476.6. And we actually utilized in January to June of 2023 485.4 uh, with a variance of uh, minus 8.7 for 2023 with the listed domestic PIDs of TLMs, school fee subsidies, school fee program, diet volume on schools, welfare and key packages for school going girls, focus resources and equity, education sector projects, pay examination fees to WIC, the WIC annual subscription and capacity building for GSS and SSS. Next. So we also try to capture ongoing projects, uh, ongoing projects for the 2024 contracts. Uh, we have a teaching and learning materials with free of suppliers. The uh, contract price is approved for 6.7, and the award date was the 18th June. And the procurement method was uh, an ICD. We also have the contract restrictions of the rest of the lease as listed welfare and hygiene implementation of national school feeding with the respective contract price being approved the award date and the procurement method in a national or international competitive bidding as listed. Next. So we we are believers of the fact that our budget should reflect the uh, the the speech by his excellence of the president and we're not far from that. We ensure that our commitments for 2023 fiscal year were related to that, of which we have achieved the following to ensure we develop the radical inclusion policy, which is access to everybody in school, the right for kids to go to school. We have a school catchment area that was developed to ensure that we map out every school, their localities, to help um, 
determine the, the sparity of schools and the intensity of schools. We also succeeded to get the integration out of child development policy to support the ECD. And of course, the school feeding policy, which is a policy to guide the path on the implementation of a school feeding. The TSC that we've been working with will be able to develop a teacher management policy, teacher development and performance policy, teacher registration and licensing. Of course, we reviewed the Education Act that was also released in 2004 to the one we have for 2023. And the Education Sector Plan, which is a five-year master plan that normally um, guides the path of the ministry for a five-year period, was also developed and achieved for 2022 through 2026. And we succeeded to get a guidance for school fees and subsidies that are normally being paid to schools. Because most often, these monies paid to schools are, well, used otherwise, not mainly maybe for the betterment of the schools. So we had to design a guidance so the schools be able to know how to use the subsidies that are paid in the respective accounts. Next. So from our work plan, the key deliverables for 2024 will include to construct and rehabilitate uh, non-formal line centers. We target in five additional centers across the provinces to ensure each of the regions benefit with one. And to further equip schools with science laboratories with one target, 50 more schools within the common year to promote science uh, and STEM in schools. We also need to phase out double sheet system in schools, for which we have a number of schools that are transitioning now to a single sheet. We have the St. Joseph's Convent, we have the facility, and other schools, principals that are moving in that direction. We also need to increase the number of beneficiaries of the school feeding program. We started off with about 250,000 in 2018, and about 2023, we recorded 818,000 kids that are benefiting from school feeding, which spans for almost 15 out of 16 districts. And for 2024, we want to see how we can target 1 million kids that are in school that will benefit from the school feeding exercise. And the next we have the integrated education management information system, which is the process of digitizing and securitized data in the education sector. So with this, we have established an education data working group that will seek to manage the affairs of all data and statistics around the education sector. And one stand that we're using is to ensure that we work with the National Civil Registration Authority to get all learners in school to get a unique ID. One, to get a national identification number. Two, to get a unique ID, for which will have a lot of interventions in the education sector. This is going to help us, one, to measure cohort analysis of number of students that enter a particular class in a given year, and the total number of students that will exit at the final stage of that level. And also, it's going to help us to um, measure the net enrollment rate, total number of kids at about a given age in a particular class um, within a school system. That is also going to help us. It's also going to help us to eliminate the total number of students that are out of school, especially in the case of the senior school exams, that are getting into the school system to write what. If you have a unique ID, you are able to tap all of those who are not supposed to be in the school system that are writing the exams will be eliminated. So we actually need to get the names and the learners ID. So our budget proposal for 2024 fiscal year, both recurrent and domestic expenditure reveal at that. We have a recurrent expenditure of 70.7 .7 million. And our domestic capital budget proposal for the year 2024 is 901.2 million. However, the ceiling given to us by the Minister of uh, Finance for our recurrent expenditure is below the doubt, which is 44.5. And unfortunately, we have an excess ceiling over, uh, which is 26.2, which is managed. In the view of um, a strategic plan that you find in the documents printed in front of you. It might not be that clear on the screen, but we have it on the booklet for which you can make the necessary reference. So this starts with the general admin and support services. Next. 
planning and policy of various activities and uh, programs. Next, partnership and finance, uh, curriculum and research. Next, uh, education services. Next, the school quality assurance. We seek to monitor activities in school. Not from our and basic education, we also seek to reach where they are school children and not from our uh, learning sectors into the formal education system. The next, we have the next one. Of course, we have the library report, which is the part of us, the free quality education, school education, and the UNESCO are uh, all autonomous bodies that are working alongside the Ministry of Education to uh, capture into our strategic plan and uh, this will the performance of these institutions. Next. So a summary of our budget recurrent for fiscal year 2024 reveals our thoughts. We have the divisions, general meal, plan and quality, partnership financing, as listed in their respective references, by letters and the reference code, and the amount stipulated for each of these. We realize that MD 2017.690.5 and our ceiling was 44.4.1 with an excess score of the ceiling being 26.16. So we have the project profile. 
This is a summary of that project profile, including the financiers that is coming from World Bank, 50 million, the multi donor trust fund, including EU and Irish Union and SCDO, 15.97, the GP tenant is 6.85 million, and we have a total project fund of 72.82 million to run the five issue. Next. So, a schematic view of the project cost and distribution so far, we had $72.8 billion, or this board $56 million, which is about 77% of that cost. With the funding balance out of July 2023, we have $16.8 billion awaiting, which means we still have 23% uh, awaiting for this board. Next. So on the free project, we have the respective components that look at various thematic areas, including policy governance, accountability, and system administration, teacher management and professional development, school level education development, program management, coordination and monitoring and evaluation. We have the contingencies, the emergency response component, and that of the education response for COVID-19. Next. So this gives a thematic uh, view of uh, procurement management, which is also of interest. This is from our partners, the Free Education Project, second year. Gives you all the projects, uh, the costs, the timelines, and uh, our contracts for 2022, 2023, and the cost, the lots. The location. Next. So this is all in the booklet that's in front of you for for that verification. So this is one of the key interests of His Excellency the President to ensure that we use school field as a strategy to make the kids more comfortable in school, with the picture in school. And we have 15 out of 16 districts now benefiting from the school. The project is 94% of that target. And 149 out of 100, 140 out of 149 teachers are benefiting now from the school feeding program. And we had about 3,197 schools out of 5,097 schools of pre primary and primary that are also benefiting from the school feeding program. And the population of learners benefiting from the school feeding program is 789,716 out of 1.4 million children. So, which means 55% of our population are already benefiting from the school feeding program. And we have our partners that are supporting us within this process, including the government of Australia. We have WFP, we have CRS plan, um, DSI, Light Investment, that are responsible for the respective districts and the population that they are supporting. Next. So this gives a view of the growth pattern of how far we've gone with the school feeding exercise. Way down in 2018, we started up with about 250,000 children that we are only benefiting from the school feeding program. And this moves on over the years, up to 2023, that we've got over 800,000 kids that are benefiting from the school feeding program. And mind you, this is chiefly for primary and primary school children, and it's been targeted in the 16 districts, of which 15 out of these 16 districts are already benefiting from the school feeding program. Next. So this gives an assessment coverage of uh, the performance of the school feeding program, including all the districts targeted, 15 out of 16, the number of cheat dogs, 